California. Noted for its beautiful hills, beautiful homes, but most of all, for its beautiful beaches. Here's one of the longest stretches of sand in the world. This is State Beach. We'll pan down the coast. It's one of its typical sunny days. typical beaches. They've had a lovely young girl on it. And here was this boy sitting with her on this particular day. But he was a little underdeveloped. Along the beach came the golden hawk, ready to pounce upon his prey. He was noted around the beaches. Chuck Pendleton. He liked what he saw, and she liked him, and that's all they needed. Come on, baby, let's go. Get lost, Sonny. Oh, those muscles. So away the muscle man went. And our skinny friend was left there alone. Seemed like everyone around him seemed to be stronger and seemed to be a better athlete. The scene was repeated day after day. And it seemed like they were all making fun of him on this particular day. Here's big Danny Rapiato. Here's Dave. Almost as big as Danny. Seemed like all the muscle men get all the pretty girls. At least that's what it seemed like to our skinny friends. How can he get muscle? Southern California is noted, as they say, for many things. So let's go inside and find out why so many people lift weights and build their bodies. You can go almost anywhere in California and you can find bodybuilders. They're popping up almost anywhere. Larry Scott, Mr. California, giving an impromptu posing routine. And where does he train? Just about everywhere. For the gyms almost everywhere. Health clubs, places to train, judo, karate, health food stores. <laughs> Here he is still posing. This is Sunset Strip he's going now. The gyms have just about everything. He did pool, bowling, ice skating, steam room. Sunroom. Women and men of all ages seem to go. Not all of the gyms are in the fanciest or plush surroundings. Some of them, some of the best, can be found in your home. And this one in particular is a good example. This one is operated by Joe Gold, Chuck Pendleton, and Chuck Mahoney, and Zabel Kazuski. Here's Pendleton and uh, Mahoney in one of their favorite pastimes, arm wrestling. But uh, they could be locked out in this for a long time, so we'll have to come back to them later on. Here's Abel Kazuski doing sit-ups. He's noted for his abdominals. 
and you can see why. He does them by the thousands. This sometimes takes hours, too, so uh, we'll have to come back to Zabel. Find out how he gets it. Some of the plushest clubs in the world can be found in Southern California. The Beverly Hills Health Club is a good example. And the trainers are some of the best. Here's Harry Warren, former boxing champion of the British Empire and coach of the Olympic team, a great believer in using weights. Isaac Berger now on the bench. Isaac is also an instructor at the Beverly Hills Health Club. He happens to be one of the greatest weightlifters in the world. He's a featherweight champion, meaning that he weighs 132 pounds. Former Pan American Games, national, world and Olympic champion. One of the few lifters who beat the Russians almost consistently. Probably one of the greatest and strongest lifters that we have pound for pound in the world. Here's Isaac, developing his thighs. Notice how powerful they are. He's using the front squat. Now he's only using 135 pounds, but he can use three and four times that amount. Powerful legs are one of the most important things in heavy lifting. competition is decided on three particular lifts. The press, where the weight is brought from the shoulders and pressed overhead in one steady movement. Here it is from behind. Isaac has done over 260 pounds in this lift. He used to hold the world's record and probably is one of the strongest men in the world in this particular lift, certainly for his body weight, only 132 pounds. The second of the three lifts in Olympic competition is the snatch lift. The weight has to be brought from the floor overhead in one continuous movement without any stopping. In 1938 or 36 uh, Olympic Games, they, in time tests, was proven that the snatch lift was one of the fastest actions for an athlete in electronically time tests. He's done around 250 pounds in that particular lift. Now the clean and jerk. This is the one that can be lifted with the heaviest poundages. He has done 335 pounds at least. He hopes to eventually do 353 pounds at 132 pound body weight. Truly a tremendous feat of strength. He's held world records in probably just about uh, all the lifts. Now watch him jerk it overhead. Look at the power. There it goes, only 135 pounds, but imagine that with 353 pounds. A great athlete. But we'll see more of Isaac later on. Is Harry and uh, Isaac comparing their muscles. Harry seems to think he's got a bigger arm than Isaac. No, no, I'm afraid I, I have, says Isaac. Actually, it's unimportant, because they're both strong and they're both great athletes. So we'll leave them arguing. In the meantime, let's go to another gym. This is one of the most famous in the world. It's located right on Hollywood Boulevard. It's Goodrich's Health Studio. Probably every great athlete at some time or another has trained at Goodrich Health Studios. This is Brick Goodrich, the first Mr. America, 1939, a great all-around athlete. Some of the strongest men in the world train there. This is Chuck Ivar doing a pullover press with 305 pounds. Just pulling it over as a feat of strength. Now let's see if he can press it. Push! Couldn't do it. Not all the boys in the gym are quite so big. 
This is Joe Montgomery. He just started a little while ago. He's only 14 years old. But he's in pain, a, a tremendous development for a kid just his age. Push. Bert keeps his camera ready because he never knows what famous athletes might show up. In this particular evening, here was Edouard Carpentier, the heavyweight professional wrestling champion of the world. He's the nephew of Georges Carpentier, the former light heavyweight champion in boxing, who fought uh, Dempsey for the world title. Here's Carpentier doing inclined presses with dumbbells to get a massive test. He had been on the Olympic team for France uh, in gymnastics, and then he turned to wrestling. Here on the same evening was Larry Scott, who we saw earlier. Here's Larry developing his biceps with the incline curl. Look at the shoulders and the biceps work as he does this. like ribs, but they're muscles. Every part of Larry is acutely developed. He's an all-around athlete as well. Here's Larry developing his back with the lat bar. Great tumbler and a former boxer as well. Here's Carpentier doing decline presses. Because of the unusual nature of the exercise, hanging uh, at such an angle, the weight usually has to be handed to you. Develops the lower pectoral muscles. In wrestling, he finds that every portion of his body has to be developed because he uses just about every portion. A great wrestler and quite a fine guy. On this particular evening, there was a contest in progress. It was the poem press. This is uh, Gus the Kid Theoklis. Doing prones, just warming up with around 250 pounds. Now we're beginning to add on a little weight now. Here's Al McKeaton, his opponent in this particular match. He's around 305 pounds now on the bar. See how he does. Al weighed around 230 pounds at the time and had done around 450 pounds in the prone at a considerably heavy body weight. And now comes the whip. Known throughout the gym and around the world as the whip. Pete Rothschild, ready to show them all. And now he decided not to. He didn't like that weight. There's 180 pounds now on the bar. Come on, whip, let's get it up. Those aren't whips, those are arms. A little help. Actually, Pete's pretty strong. Ah, enough of that. Now back to the big boys. Gus the Oakless now choking his hand. He's going to try for that 305. He weighs just over the 200 pound body weight, so this is a good lift for him. Push. A good one. Now, it's Rothschild. He's been inspired by what's been going on. Come on, Pete. Let's go. 205 pounds. That didn't quite make it. Ah, that's enough of that. He's decided he's going to retire. He's on the keep now with 350 pounds on the bar. Push it. Lock it. Let's see how he feels about it. <laughs> In the meantime, Rothschild has decided he's going to retire for good. And over this weightlifting, he's going to let the other guys train. He's going to train on organic cigarettes. He's training for a big contest that's coming up on the following day. Let the other boys work. And work they do. Here's Larry Scott developing his triceps. It's the back of his arms and look at him move. 
That is very well defined. This is something that many athletes work years to, to get, this type of definition. Sit-ups to trim the waist down. laterals for developing the deltoids. The deltoids are the shoulder muscles on the calf of the shoulder. Let's look at those deltoids work. Ah, it's enough of that. In the meantime, Kip Bayar has decided to go into a contest for strength. The Beneville rowing motion, which he's quite uh, proud of, he's got a tremendous amount of strength in this particular lift. It's a tremendous amount of back and lower back strength, as well as arms. Kip only weighs 198 pounds, but boy, has he got strength. He was just warming up with 250 pounds. He plans to really hit a peak tonight. Huh. I almost feel it now. Al McKeaton, sensing the contest again after beating Gus, decided that he's going to join in this. He's going to beat Kip at his own game. This is around uh, 300 pounds here on the bar now. Just a warm-up. And what does the whip think about it? Well, <clears throat> he couldn't care less. He's just dreaming about victory tomorrow victory in another type of contest. In the meantime, the weights are getting so heavy that the hands have to be strapped to the bar. This is really a, a feat of strength now, every time they lift it. And the bit of a row, the weight has to be lifted off the ground and up to the chest. There we go. That's around 325 pounds. Now here's 355. The weights are really going up now. 355, and here's Alma Keaton now trying. Al strapping his hands out of the bar. Come on, Al. Ah, he liked that one. Okay, it's Kip's turn now. 355. Tremendous lift for only 198 pounds. Now it's 380 pounds on the bar. Just think of the concentration that this takes. The will, the power to say that I can do it. 380 pounds. Of course, to Rothschild, this means absolutely nothing. Even a cigarette there on the heel uh, refuses to wake him. He's still contemplating victory. Now it's 400 pounds in the bar. That's McKeaton's turn. Ah, uh, now he has to keep bent over. Try it as he may, he can't make it. Way too much. And now it's Kip's turn. 198 pounds, come on, Kip. Couldn't do it, but it was a great try. So we leave Goodrich and Carpentier. And we go back to uh, our arm wrestlers. It seems that Mahoney and Pendleton are still locked out, and Mahoney's writing a letter to his girl, so. This could really take quite some time, probably a lot longer than I thought. Well, what about Kazuski? Well, I was going to say, what about Kazuski, but here he is still doing his sit up. Thousands. On he goes. In the middle of Hollywood is an oasis. An oasis known as the Back to Nature Health Hut. Organic fruit produce juice. run by Gypsy Boots. Yes, that's his name. And you've never met such a character. And you've never been in such a place as the health hut. Any time that Boots gets an inspiration for a sign or an idea, he puts it up there on the, on the front of his shop. He serves every type of health food you can imagine. He's probably one of the last of the free souls. 
complete individualist. Hi, uh... Every Saturday night, he used to hold a luau. But what kind of a person is Gypsy Boots? Here he comes, rising. The one and only Gypsy Boots. But don't laugh. Boots is quite a character, and he'll be the first to admit it. But he's also quite an athlete. When the Los Angeles Rams first came out here to, to, to Los Angeles from Cleveland, he used to give exhibitions in the halftime of kicking a football with his bare foot 70 yards. That's quite a distance even with a boot. But he's good not only with his foot, but with his hands as well. Tossing his 70 yards in the air with his hands. And look at this for pinpointing from behind the back, right in front of the camera. Boots is quite an athlete. And uh, quite a character, as I said before. Here he is having some lunch. Uh, yes, he believes that standing in your head aids digestion. <laughs> You've left that joke. <laughs> but one of Boots's happiest things is to welcome people into his place to eat. And here's one of the special occasions. Welcome muscle men of America to Gypsy's Health Hut. Annual weightlifters eating contest. This happens every year. And it gets bigger, it seems, every year. It's sponsored by Ferreira's Carrot Juice, the champion of youth, and the Tree Wax Company of America. And here are the contestants. A motley crew. Tree Wax sponsors this, and he's quite proud of it. He's quite a helping indeed, as you can see. No, they're not going to eat the Tree Wax. Now Boots is explaining the rules. It seems that each one of the contestants, there's Bone Ziegler, uh, there's Ron the Arab Haddad, Kerwin, there's the Cassie, the Theoclis, and that madman, the Whip. Now the girls are bringing on Ferreira's carrot juice, champion of youth. <laughs> they have to eat as much as they can within a time limit. And that means everything that's brought before them. All the health food that Gypsy Boots can muster. Here's the first course, just to whet the appetite. And he can't wait to get up food there. Look at him. Uh, we have a, a new contestant here who just came in at the last minute. One of our ancestors, you might say. Well, Boots believes in sharing some of the profits here. Ferreira's carrot juice to him is so good he has to take a little bit more of it. Some of the girls start imbibing. There's, there's the monkey. Matter of fact, he starts drinking uh, Ziggler's. Enough of that. Here goes the main course now. Well, it looks good to begin with. No problem here. Uh, the food, that is. Organic cigarettes still training. His Boots family. Wife and two children. Now, Boots is quite proud of his wife's leg development. And he insisted that she show how she developed them. She's quite an answer. They're reaching for the sky there. But the boys keep on eating. Nothing stops the contest. They only have an hour time limit. There's a cucumber going into Gus's drink there. Yeah. Pete knows that he doesn't like it, and he thinks that anything to win. 
In the meantime, in comes Smiling Stella and her accordion. She's quite an accordionist. And this brings the fire to Gypsy Boots' blood. Matter of fact, so much he has to start dancing around. And his spirit is contagious. He wants everyone to join in with him. But nothing stops eaters. They must continue only an hour... Mahatma goes on and on. Help food! In the meantime, his son has gone into a trance. This is just too much for him. He's waiting for his father, who is now being beaten. Beaten to tougher than his back for the ordeal that's ahead of him. He's gonna lie on a bed of spikes. Here we go, Boots. Let's hope no character spurts out when he lays on it. The pain. Those are real nails. Come on, Boots. The phony either. Just look at the hole. But nothing stops the eaters. On they go. That's it, boys. Keep on eating. He's determined he's going to win. Come on, Whip. Let's go. Stuff it in. The Oculus is not... Or at least doesn't have quite the same table manners, but everyone else is trying to ignore Rothschild now. His boots lifting weights. He believes it's a family project. On he goes, eating, stuffing his face with more food. And here's Boots' <laughs> favorite dance, the Russian dance, and he nearly knocked over the table. He's completely irrepressible. Nothing stops him. Our contestants were getting logy now with food, but Boots kept on going. If they ever had any doubt, all they had to do was to look at him. This is what health food does for you, he says. And he's a perfect example of it. Nothing stops him. By this time, a few people have begun to gather and watch. These two boys are flaked out. It's just Haddad and Ziggler. They've decided to make bets on the outcome. There are only three guys left. And it's so hard to get your food down now. It has to be fed to them. Let's go, Steelclip. And the whip is still in it. That's it, whip. Keep on going, baby. There, with in just goes. That's for dessert. Yeah, one of the contestants is uh, really going out. He can't eat another bite. Well, now, here they are making bets. Now, you better keep that money away there from Rothschild, because it's just between Rothschild and Tassie, and Rothschild's liable to eat anything. There goes the money. You better grab it. And this is to go to the girls. A bottle of Ferreira's carrot juice, a can of tree wax, and that big trophy to the winner. More food, and here's the winner, naturally. For the worst table manners, and the greatest consumption, it's Pete Rothschild. 
To every winner, there's a loser, and to the victor belongs a spoil. I'll teach you not to bet. Not against Rothschild. beginning to flake out now. So let's take a 10 minute break while he takes a break. And I mean he had to be carried away, but let's remember it was a day like all days, except Gypsy Boots was there. Big Danny Lafayette is training at the Pasadena gym. Here's John Byers, he's 45 years old and a postman keeping in shape. Age makes no difference in weight training, as long as you have the will. Here's Danny now developing his back. He's a great karateist. We'll see more of karate later. Now you see why they call him Big Danny. There are two great football players. That's Mike Conley in the blue shirt. Plays for the LA Rams. That's Bill Meglin with him. Plays for the Los Angeles Chargers. Conley's 6'3 and weighs 250 pounds and does a 10-7 dash at that body weight. Meglin was 6'2 and 230. An outstanding college wrestler. Is Conley doing 310 pounds and the prone press to develop his chest and shoulders. There isn't any form of sports or any sport in the world that cannot be helped with weight training. Progressive weight training is the greatest supplement to all sports as long as it's properly applied. Pasadena Gym specializes in scientific weight training. fit sometimes because of the big boys who train there. Is Vafiatis again. Well, let's see what... Ah, here they are still harm wrestling. I was going to say what's happening, but uh, here's Pendleton and Mahoney's still locked out in arm wrestling. Pendleton's reading the girlies magazine to pass the time and he's still doing his sit-ups. It's ridiculous. We'll have to come back to them later on. <laughs> Beach Weightlifting Club. The Valhalla of all weightlifting. Almost every great athlete at some time or another is going to the Muscle Beach Weightlifting Club to lift and train and see a great athlete. The equipment is sometimes considered crude. But the athletes are big enough to handle the equipment. This is Berger just before the Rome Olympic Games. practicing his jerks, clean and jerk. He has only, and I say that respectfully, 290 pounds on the bar. This is light where I think. Here he tries with 305 pounds. It takes concentration, and he has that ability. Will to do. 305 pounds. Solid jerk. In the meantime, Dave Davis, a Olympic team member and a shot put, came into the gym. Here he is pressing. Davis is quite a heavyweight. Here's Ike now with 320 pounds on the bar. He 
He's done over 335 pounds, but in practice, it's still a tremendous lift. Ellie lost the clean. Clean is when he brings it from the floor. Here's the second half of the clean jerk. But he knew this day he didn't have it. So he just forgot about it. He'd save his strength for the press. And now, here's Lou Paul and Jim Hamilton flipping a coin for a contest. Lou Paul goes first, and he's going to do some prone presses with 330 pounds for repetition. One. But in the meantime, there was a commotion in another part of the gym. Here's Big Dave Davis and Ike Berger having at it. You see how much bigger Davis is than Berger. Means nothing to Ike, though. Meantime, the contest goes on. Now it's Hamilton's turn. 330 pounds in the bar. It's hard enough for the ordinary person just to lift it once. But to do it for repetitions, here we go. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven. He beat him. He's going to try for another. Ah, oh, couldn't do it. Great try, and he won. Of course, he outweighs Paul, though. They are. In the meantime, Isaac is beginning to destroy Davis. <laughs> you can see the difference in size. This is Paul Magistretti. He's the California weightlifting champion of 196, a heavyweight champion. Taking 675 pounds in the bar, I asked him what his best for quarter squats was, and he said he thought he could do around 800 pounds. But that would necessitate taking off the outside plates and putting on specially made 115-pound ones. And since there was no room for the collars with that particular weight of 800 pounds, they'd have to put on tire tubes on the outside to hold it on. A very dangerous thing to do, for they could slip and fall, and the weight would go flying, even with spotters. But he said he was going to try, so that was just a warm-up with 675 pounds, getting ready for 800 pounds. Not all of the athletes in the gym are pure strength athletes. And here's a fine example. This is Hugo Labra, a strong man in his own right, but better known, as you can see, for his tremendous physique. Mr. California, most muscular man in California. Junior Mr. America, Mr. Pacific Coast are just a few of his titles. This is young Bruce Bordy. He's only 12 years old, and that's his father. Father's quite a fine athlete. Gene Bordy, the former Junior Mr. American and Junior National Weightlifting Champion. It's his son, Bruce, only 12 years old, taking 35 pounds in each hand. That's quite a weight for a kid his age, or well, for anyone for that matter. Most adults start off with that. Here he is, only 12. He's an all-around athlete, having competed in numerous contests and Junior Olympic contests and winning a great many medals and awards. His father is quite justly proud of his son's physique, as well as his athletic ability. Gene is now in the process of instructing Bruce in, in physical display. Young Sandow. Here's Bill West. They used to call him Peanuts because he was small, but they haven't called him that for a long time. Here he is with 400 pounds. And he weighs only 198 pounds. Now he's going up to 420 pounds on the bar. Let's see if he makes it. 420 pounds. Couldn't do it. It's a great try. Now this is Joe DeMarco. He weighs a little bit more. 230 pounds, and he's trying with 410 pounds but he's gonna try it with a dead stop. Now watch it go down to the chest, 410 pounds, dead stop, and now push it up. That's brute strength. 
wasn't too long ago when 400 pounds by anyone and still is is considered a tremendous feat of strength. Here's West now. He's got 400 pounds on. He's going to try for reps using the belly toss. There he goes. Push it. Lock. Three reps. Here's Joe DeMarco. It's Jim Record. 425. It's a good try. Now West is going to lower it just a little bit from 425 to 420. 420 pounds, he's going to try a belly toss. Any way that he can get it up at all is a feat of strength. Come on, Bill, let's try. Now push it. Lock it. Great lift. And we're really going hot and heavy at it today. Berger now is going from the clean and jerk to his presses. He's starting off with 240 pounds. The few men in the world is body weight who can press it even at their final attempt. There he is just starting it in practice. Felt good and he thought he'd try for more. Now here we go. This is 800 pounds on the bar. The bar is almost bent double, it seems. And everyone was quite worried for fear that some of the plates might fall off. Starting back, he said, I can't make it. It was uncomfortable on his back. He went forward and I thought he was going to stop. But he adjusted his shoulders, stood up again, and started walking back. I counted as many as 12 steps just walking backwards. That in itself is a feat of strength. Walking backwards with 800 pounds on your shoulders. A great athlete and a lot of guts. Now it's Burgess' turn. That inspired him. Here's 250 now on the bar. 250 now for the press. Uh, that was a surprise. He thought he'd make that pretty easily. <laughs> he try again. So he put his shirt back on and added 10 pounds. This is 260 pounds now on the bar. The record was around 263 pounds at the time. He's around three pounds off the world record. If he does this, He'll be one of the few men in the world who can make this lift. 260 pounds on the bar, just in practice. 132 pound body weight. Good pull. Oh, couldn't make it. Two tries, still couldn't make it. Boy, was he mad. In the meantime, this is West back on the bar. That's 440 pounds. Couldn't quite make it, but it was a beautiful try. 440 pounds at that body weight. Now they're going to do some belly tosses. Out now, belly tosses. There was some padding underneath there to catch the weight. You'd have to. 455 pounds in the bar, Joe DeMarco. But that was just the beginning. Is 480 pounds on the bar. Push it. Beautiful. Real power. Now he's contemplating doing a quarter of a ton. 500 pounds. Just to hold it out at arm's length without letting it crash to your chest is tremendous. But he's going to try to do a belly toss with it. A quarter of a ton. Beautiful lift. Well, Berger now is really upset. He's got to make that 260 pounds. The guys are beginning to kid him. And that's all he needs. He has to get it. That's Charlie Coster in the back, a weightlifting expert, giving him a little advice, and let's see if he can do it. 260 pounds. Ah! 
couldn't make it. In the meantime, Parry O'Brien came into the gym. Parry is a great shot put champion. Two-time Olympic gold medal winner. Member of three Olympic teams. It's well over 60 feet, former world record holder. Now with 3.30 on the bar, now here's 3.50. Oh, Berger was really, really pooped now this time, you can see. He said, but can you lift 260 pounds over your head? Well, for a heavyweight, that wasn't too much, but he said he'd do 270 pounds. Go 10 better than Isaac in the press. Two great competitors, and there it is, 270, easily pressed overhead. Of course, he outweighs Isaac, but still didn't make Ike feel too good. Here's Lou Paul now doing dips. Uh, this is an average exercise for anyone, but for Lou Paul, it's just a warm-up. Here goes the real feat of strength. This is 240 pounds now on the bar, or I should say tied around his waist. That's 240 pounds plus his own body weight. Now this apparatus is suspended above the ground. If he can't make it and push up, he's lost. Because no one was there to catch him. He'd fall, go right through, I imagine. I could just see his arms coming right out of their socket. 240 pounds now. Push it. Tremendous. Well, O'Brien was feeling pretty good, and Isaac wasn't. He pressed what he said he could, and Isaac was surprised. Take hands with the champ, he said. So they made a deal. Let me use your belt, he said. I'm sure I can do it. Now the guys are beginning to make bets. Could he make it? 260 pounds, here it goes. Press! Walk it! Beautiful lift. He did it, and was he happy? Here's Bill West now. He's got 200, I mean 340 pounds with a push jerk. That's where you just bring it to the shoulders from the racks, bend your knees and press it overhead, or push press it. Well, he was feeling pretty good. That's a pretty good lift for any man. But not for Isaac. He made his lift, so everyone has to do better than their best. Get in there and do 350 pounds. So here he goes. He's trying for 350 pounds. Remember, West only weighs 198 pounds. Come on, Bill. 350 pounds. Ah. Well, he didn't quite lock out. Good enough for me, but what does he think of it? <laughs> Isaac loves that. Hal Conley was also there. Hal is a former Olympic champion, gold medal champion. Quite an athlete. Aside from being a great Olympic champion, he married another gold medal champion, Olga Fikatova of Czechoslovakia. They had quite a romance in the Olympic Games in Melbourne in 1956. He swore that he'd get her as his wife, and he went behind the Iron Curtain to do so. Here he is out on the field. Most people think of weightlifters as being muscle-bound or tied up. Is a man who practices with weights assiduously. And one of the greatest athletes in the world. World record holder in the hammer throw. Here he is just warming up. Watch this. For a muscle bound athlete, never. Spins and there it goes. Now, if you missed that, let's look at it in slow motion. Look at the timing, the coordination. Here's 
with his lovely wife, Olga, Olga Fikatova Conley. Great champion in her own right, practicing for the Olympics in Rome. Former gold medal champion. Now an American citizen. And there they are, with their child. Quite a strength and health family. These are not flying saucers, although it may look like it. Nor is it an invasion from Mars. This is the discus, being thrown by the magician of the discus, the great Fortune Gordine, member of three Olympic teams. He nearly made a fourth. Former world record holder. Magic is his hobby, and some people used to think he practiced magic with the discus. Another great weight trainer. Here's Conley now, doing heavy squats. That's 495 pounds. Here he is now with 515. 515 pounds in the bar for Conley. And he makes it, but in another corner of the gym, Another contest is about to start. Weight trainers love contests. Competition is the greatest form of success, or the greatest incentive to success. Never a great athlete was developed without a spirit of competition. Here's West now doing one of his favorite exercises on the incline bench. That's 85 pounds in each hand. The incline press is dumbbell. Here's Jim Hamilton now. This is really not an incline bench. This is 59 degrees in, in, in angle, which is almost like a seated press, which makes it quite difficult. Now going up to bigger weights. This is 100 pounds in each hand. to see how high they can go. Now we're really getting up there. This is 125 pounds in each hand. Determination. Look at that for power. 198-pound guy. Isaac just thinks this is terrific, but now he's going to try to break a record of his own. The handstand push-up is difficult for a lot of people, so he's going to try to break the record, which is around 21. Let's see if he can do it. One. Two. Three. Have his 135, the biggest ones in the gym. Tremendous, and he wins hands down. This is 555 pounds in the bar. Have you ever seen 555 pounds drop in the deadlift? <coughs> now you have. 
And so we leave the Muscle Beach Weightlifting Club. Truly a home of great lifters and great champions. Empty hands. I have no weapons, but should I be forced to defend myself, my principles, or my honor? Should it be a matter of life or death? Or wrong? And here are my weapons. Karate, my empty hands. This is karate. Many people have heard of it, and many people have seen it lately. But here it is, practiced in its finest form by the Ed Parker School of Karate. Here's a brown belt champion now, breaking the brick. Third time, watch it. Great power and determination. Here's another great karateist. He's broken three boards with his fists before. Tonight he's gonna try for four. With his bare hand. That's Parker there in the foreground. Black belt. Now it's very important how these boards are held. If there's any give whatsoever, and the force of the blow is somewhat spent. But it has to be held steadfast. Four boards now. On the third blow, there's one. Two. <clears throat> Nothing happened to the board, but certainly something to his hand. And see it there, drew some blood. Could hardly use his hand for around a week afterwards. But he'll keep on doing it until he breaks it. And why? Many people have asked why a man studies karate. But then you can ask, why does a man climb mountains? Why does a man try to run faster than anyone else? Swim faster. There's a reason. The reason for karate is probably as practical and more so than any other sport. It was brought over from China many, many years ago, around the 6th century AD. A Buddhist monk developed karate because he and the other priests were being waylaid by robbers. Now their religion forbade them to use any weapons, so he decided to develop the body into a weapon. Each finger was a knife, each fist was a hammer, each arm a sword, every portion of the body. I've even seen scar tissue on the tops of their heads. Here they are developing their fingers in buckets. Each bucket gets harder, starting with rice, then sand. There are lead pellets. The fingers can break boards. The most difficult of the buckets is gravel. They try to put those fingers right down to the bottom. Yes, even the feet are used. I just watch what the feet can do right through like tissue paper. Those are two one-inch pine boards. Imagine that in the throat. Or in the gut. If you've ever hit your funny bone or your elbow, you know how painful it can be. Here is a man who's going to take that same elbow and try to break three, three pine planks. Now here, let's see him try to get it on the third blow. Two. No, oh, couldn't do it, but he tried again and he did it. Now karate is not just breaking things. Karate is, is like a religion. It started with a religious premise and it continued that way. It's discipline. Karate could almost mean discipline. Discipline of the mind and body, the will to do. There is a class practicing. Each move has a meaning. Hour 
hours and hours of training, weeks and weeks, months and months, years and years. They never stop training. The greatest of the karate is still train. They learn all the pressure points, where to break and where to hurt. Karate, unlike judo, is a form of attack, constant attack. Judo uses the man's body weight against him. Let's the other man attack. Karate attacks itself. I've seen exhibitions where a man's ear was nearly torn off. They try to pull their blows, but even with the pulling, they still get that force behind it. There are two champions, Richie Montgomery with the black belt and the great Ed Parker. Notice how violent they get, so much so that they have to stop. Real power. Now what happens when a man comes at you with a gun? That's just one way of getting rid of it. See it fly. A man coming at you with a club. Attack and kill. A man coming at you from behind. Two men attacking you. Here's a brown belt champion against two men of lesser degree. Now they were really trying to get to him. But look at his arms and legs. He was pulling his blows, but just imagine if he wasn't. Think of those boards. Impossible to get to. A deadly weapon. Hands and feet. What about six men attacking you? Here's a black belt champion taking on six men. Watch them fall like bowling pins. And these are the degrees. The white belt. The white with one brown stripe, white with two brown stripes, brown belt. Of course, the highest of the wall, the black belt. But how do they get these degrees? Through matches. The judges watch them. They see if the blow could have landed. And here are two men having it out. Two men of the same degree battling for their brown belt. Now, they were pulling their blows, but I can tell you this, that while I was filming it, I could hear those feet landing with deadly thuds, even when they were pulling it. And they were quite sore afterwards, but they didn't care. The important thing was scoring those points. And like all athletic forms that require power, weights are a very important part. Now, a weight facility is right there. It is Ed Parker's studio. Now they see that one roofing tile is guaranteed to be unbreakable. Well, here's a man who's going to disprove that fourfold. Here's Ed Parker now taking four, four roofing tile and breaking it with his bare fist. I asked him how many he could do, and he said he's done as many as 12 or 14 tile. Here he is now with eight tile. Remember, it takes the will to do. Concentration. One. On the third blow. Two. Now real power. Two. Just like a rifle shot. All in a day's work at the karate studio. Well, here they are. And now they're beginning to argue over over the pinup magazine. Heck with the arm wrestling. And this Kazuski, well, we can just as well forget about these guys. These guys are really stuck. Kazuski could go on forever. Ah, but turn off the light, he says. And turn on the posing light. Take off your glasses. Uh, now, Zabo is giving us a posing routine. Zabo's a great jokester, but he's also a great athlete. There's none better. Former professional wrestler and holder of numerous physique titles. That's for the girls. There are a few greater athletes, nicer guys, than Zabel's Kazuski. Zabel's around 36 years old and he still maintains his tremendous condition. A great deal of the art of posing is muscle control, and he has it down to a science. He 
You can see why he wins best abdominal contest almost invariably. we began by the golden waters California. 